Okay. Did I get all the stuff off? Good. Okay. So, uh, time to talk about strain gauges. Now, strain gauges work on a very simple property. It's uh, the first of the transducers we'll be talking about, really. Um, the purpose of a transducer is to measure, take information out of a system and measure it. Unlike energy converters, a uh, transducer's goal is to convert as much of the energy from one form to another as possible. A uh, transducer, the goal is to, to disturb the system as little as possible. So let's talk about strain gauges and how they, how they work. Strain gauge works on a simple property of, of resistance in a wire. I've got a wire of length L, and it's got area, cross-sectional area A. Every wire has, uh, every material has its own type of resistivity, its uh, tendency to resist the flow of electrons. And that's given by resistivity, resistivity is given by rho. And the units are uh, generally like micro-ohms times centimeters. Now, the resistance of the wire is given by the resistivity, right? The more resistivity, the more resistance it has, times the length of the wire. The longer the wire is, the more resistance. Divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now, what happens if you take that wire and you compress it? Not this wire. And I compress it. And what's going to happen is the wire is going to get shorter and fatter. If I stretch it, the wire is going to get skinnier and longer. So if I compress it, the resistance, let's see, the area will go up. The length will go down, uh, that means the resistance drops in the wire. If I stretch it, the length goes up, the area goes down, the resistance increases. So a change in the shape of the wire produces a change in the resistance. A strain gauge, strain gauges are uh, of different sizes, but generally what they do is they want to get as much length of the wire in as they can. So a strain gauge will look like and it's connected to a circuit and you run a voltage through it and you watch the current as, the, as it gets compressed the resistance goes down and the current rises as it gets stretched the resistance goes up and the current will drop so you can determine how much it's stretched by that by knowing the material and the reason they have it like this is just so they can get lots of length in because they can, it's easier to measure the change in length um, these are generally they're about the size of postage stamps and they're very thin wires so they show a big change uh, let me just do a simple example. Let's say we've got uh, uh, let's say we've got a wire and it's got a cross-sectional area of uh, let's see maybe a tenth of a centimeter let's say a millimeter it's a millimeter squared so maybe it's uh, three so see three square millimeters would be. 0 0.03 square centimeters. Now let's say it's aluminum. Uh, the length is um, uh, 100 centimeters. And the resistivity of aluminum is uh, about 2.824 uh, micro ohms times centimeters. So A, what's the original resistance? I'll call it R1. It's, uh, let's see, resistance is resistivity times length over area, which is going to be 2.824. Now, micro means times 10 to the minus 6. So I'm just going to write times 10 to the minus 6 ohms times centimeters times the length, which is 100 centimeters, divided by 0.03 centimeters squared. The area. That's going to be about, uh, let's see, 8, 7, 9. Yeah, but I might as well just calculate it. Okay, 
is uh, 7.47 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared, which cancels with these centimeters squared. So I'm just going to get ohms. Now let's say I stretch it. Let's say the new resistance, I stretch it and the resistance goes up. Uh, let's say it goes up to um, 0 0.01 ohms. What's the change in resistance? Change resistance is, uh, let's see, 2.53 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms. And that change in resistance can be calibrated so that it, it tells you what the, um, what the change in the stress, or oh, excuse me, what the, what the change in the strain was. So you can calibrate so you know how much it stretched out. And uh, strength gauges are used everywhere because they're so easy. Look, they're small. You can put them on anything. It's a very hand, handy transducer. It's cheap. It's accurate. Uh, as you'll find, most transducers work on some very simple uh, concepts. Uh, strain gauge is a good example of that. 